Hi everyone, David Looms here. Thanks for joining me. Um, what I want to talk about today is uh, some recently added extensions to the post processor I do for Fusion 360 and Pathpilot. So if you're not a Pathpilot user, um, I'm afraid there's nothing here of interest to you. So thanks for joining us anyway. Um, the additions are in three groups. Firstly, there's some new additions to the WCS probing. There's one new probing routine and there's some extra facilities in all the probing routines. Um, I hope that's useful to people. Um, secondly, I've added some functionality to the handling of electronic tool setters. Again, if you're an electronic tool setter user, I'm sure um, you'll enjoy these. Um, and thirdly, for everyone's benefit, I've added some much better control of uh, retraction policies as when the machine will retract the head um, and where to. Um, it's pretty coarse in the past, so I've improved that a lot. Anyway, so to charge straight in, um, the probing first. There is a new WCS probing um, to pick a partial circle, and this model here that I've got open is ideal. I can click on there, and it will do three-point probe. I can move the exact points around to avoid that hole there. And having done those three probing points, it will calculate the center of the circle and its diameter um, and realign the WCS so that the center of the circle is where it's supposed to be. Um, this one you have to be a little bit careful of. It's not like the other um, probing options in the if you were to take these, for example, and position them like that, the result would probably be very, very poor indeed. Um, that's three points of the straight line. You can't find the center of that circle with any accuracy at all. So a little bit of uh, forethought, and you really need to keep them, what have I done? I uh, clicked on something. Yeah, you need to keep them decently separated. Something like that would be rather nice. That would work very well indeed. While I've got the probe uh, parameters open, um, for a good long while, there have been tolerance parameters on position and size as appropriate, depending on the particular probe operation. But they've never done anything um, on Pathpilot in the past. They can do now. If you go to the Actions tab, if we would like the machine to error and stop, if it turns out that uh, that circle that we just probed is the wrong diameter, then simply check the wrong size box and the machine will go into feed hold and uh, an error message will be printed to the status screen to tell you what's happened. It's then up to you whether you want to carry on or not. The other option we have on this screen, if I take that off, is print results. If you turn on the print results option, then the x, y center coordinates and the diameter that have been calculated from the probing results um, will be output to the status screen where you can read them and pick them up later. So that's what's new in probing. If you're a probe user, I hope that will be of use to you. Um, while I've got this model open, this is a fairly typical second dot. I'll turn it, turn it around so we can see what's going on. Um, yeah, thanks to the guys at Autodesk for letting us see this. That's what we're going to see after the first dot. It's fairly typical. There's a lump of material on top still to be removed that makes it impossible to probe um, any accurately machined surfaces. So we have to first um, machine away the overhang, then face the top off before finally we can actually put some probing routines in on accurate surfaces. The snag is that if unless you have a very effective flood cooling system, after this facing up, you're likely to have a lot of chips sitting around, which you have to clear off before you let the, the probe go. Normal um, practice for me would be to, to add in a, a manual NC stop command. If you've never seen these before, they're very useful. On the setup drop down, you can choose manual NC and then there are a number of different types. Some of these are supported, some of them aren't, depending on your machine. But I think pretty much everyone does stop. Um, what that will do is cause the machine to go into feed hold when it reaches this point to allow you to clean the chips off before carrying on. The snag being that on the old post process, it did, however, leave the spindle exactly where it was, um, sitting low over the work, which could make it difficult to get in. And since it is a feed hold, the jog commands don't work, so there wasn't a lot you could do about it. So that's a nice introduction to what I've done about the retraction policies. Um, if we were to try and post-process this now, what I've done is added some additional options, which, yeah, there they are. They all start with the word retract. And I have the option retract and manual NC stop command. I can choose between G30 and G28. 
as Z only or Z then XY. If you don't know what G28 and G30 are, then I strongly suggest you go and find out before uh, and then come back and watch this again. But if I choose uh, that option there, G30, Z then XY, then what should happen if you've set G30 properly is that the uh, machine head will retract up to maximum height and then the table will move forward and center on the um, enclosure door, which makes it very easy to open the door, clean the chips away, and then press uh, cycle start to carry on. Much better. The first time you use this post, the settings uh, are there to mimic the default settings in the old post processor. The old post processor only had two options, use G30 and use G28. Um, G30 was used for every vertical motion that there was. And G28, as far as I could work out, was only used for XY and only right at the end of uh, your uh, program. If you choose to turn it on, it defaulted to off. So the default options here are set to G30Z only in all the places that the old post processor would have done it. So we have before the program starts, after the program ends, before every tool change, um, on a WCS change and on a work plane change. To explain what these are, WCS change would happen if you were um, using two vices and machining either two parts the same or perhaps the first and second off of the same part, one in one vice, one in the other. Um, every time the tool moved from one vice to the other, it would first do a G30 retract up to maximum machine height, which is very safe, but hugely inefficient if you are in fact making two parts that were exactly the same height and they're only a couple of inches apart. Um, inserting that, uh, that retract to max height and back down again adds a huge amount of time. If you turned it off, set it to none, um, then what happens is after each individual machining op, the head will go back up to that particular machining operation's um, clearance height, and it's up to you to make sure that the clearance height is correct. But in the old post processor, to have that option, you had to turn G30, use G30 off, and that turned it off for everything else as well. Not a good idea. Um, so typical way is the way I have it set up in my machine. Um, retract and manual NC stop. Yep, we've already covered that. Um, retract before program start. Yep, I leave that like that because it's a nice safe thing if I ever happen to leave the uh, machine head down low near the vice. Um, Fusion will otherwise start with an XY move, um, so it could collide with the device. Retract after program end. I change that from vertical axis only to Z then XY. And what that means is at the end of a program, um, what happens is the mill head retracts to the top and the table comes forward and centered. Um, nice and easy for me to unload a part and load the next one. Retract before tool change. This is one that always annoyed me. Um, if you happen to have an automatic tool changer, it's really frustrating to watch the head retract to maximum height and then come back down the two or three inches to the tool change height for every tool change, again, wastes a lot of time. If you have an automatic tool changer, turn it off. Tool changes get much better. The other option with a tool changer, if you ever find yourself in a position where you have tools in the carousel, which are long enough that they could possibly collide with the work, then a good idea here is to use G28. And if we have, uh, before a tool change, to a G28, Z, then X, Y, and that gives you the opportunity to move the head up far enough to be guaranteed that everything will clear, then move the table out the way, probably to maximum minus X, which moves the table to the right away from the tool changer, complete the tool change, and after it's finished, G28, vertical only, which makes enough room to get the table back in again, which will happen automatically. So that's two different ways you might use uh, the Tool change, the, the before and after tool change settings. Um, the remaining two, well, Retract and WCS have talked about briefly already. Um, that affects when you're using multiple vices. The last one, Retract on work plane change. Uh, this is to do with using uh, rotary axis um, and A-axis. The default settings in the old post-processor meant that every time you rotated the A-axis to do three plus one machining on a different, uh, a different orientation, it retracted the head to maximum height. Um, again, hugely inefficient. Um, the way I have it set up, either I'll have it set to none, in which case it's my responsibility to make sure the clearance height in each machining op is high enough, um, or um, perhaps a little easier to set up, 
is to use G28 again and use the vertical axis only, but this time set the vertical axis in G28 at a height that guarantees all the tools will clear the work, but not any more than that. So it will perhaps be uh, only a third of the way up in the vertical axis. Much faster, much better. So that's the uh, retraction policy. It's a lot more flexible than it was, and it makes the machines uh, nicer to use. It's uh, a time saver and at virtually no cost. There aren't any downsides. The last area I mentioned and uh, is electronic tool setters. Um, and again, I happen to have this particular uh, setup is a good way to show it. Um, what I've closed that should have closed that box. Um, there have already been a set of options just a bit further down on how to use a tool changer. Um, sorry, a tool setter if you happen to have one. Uh, those are the default settings where everything was set to none, but you have the, operation, the, the option of saying after a tool is used, I'd like to check its length to make sure it hasn't broken. I could have said before a tool is used, go and measure it and set its length. There's a couple of caveats to that. Uh, first of all, there's a diameter limit that basically says my tool setter has a pad on it that's only half an inch in diameter, so don't try and check or set two inch face mills, it's not going to work. And the tolerance for the check operations is set to 5,000. Um, it's also aware that you cannot use a tool setter to set the length of a probe, so it will skip probes. It's equally well aware that the diameter limit doesn't apply to spot drills or drills in general, because they will all be able, always be able to be used. So that's what was there in the past. What's been added? Well, there are two things in Fusion that have been there for a while that I hadn't noticed, um, but I've implemented them now. And the first concerns uh, the tool library itself. So if I open my tool library, and I'll pick, um, we're looking at OP2, yeah, I'll pick my, my 8mm um, end mill, and edit the tool, and go to the post processor tab. There's a checkbox here that says brake control. Um, and if I set that, turn it on, then every time the program is finished with this tool and is about to change it um, to another tool, it will first go over to the tool setter and do a check operation on its length and it will feed hold the program if there's a discrepancy there. allows you to check if the tool has broken or not. That's pretty useful. The other one that's even better is that you can do this via manual NCs. If I go back to my setup menu, add a manual NC, we saw earlier that there is a stop option. There's also a tool brake control option. And if I put that in, we can select that at manual NC and we can drag it up to, oh, I don't know, let's put it, let's put it there. So these tool five is my spot drill. So it's done a couple of spot drilling operations and I've said, we're about to unload it. So I specifically ask that a tool break check is done there. So tool five will be checked um, before we go on any further. The other option that you may possibly have seen there, if I open this one, not only is there tool break control, there's also measure tool. Measure tool refers not to the tool we've just used. That's not very useful. It refers to the tool that's about to be used. So my next operation is tool one, two, one. That's a drill. Now I commonly use a lot of different sized drills. I don't have enough tool holders, so I don't keep them mounted. Um, so rather than me having to mount the things and measure them before I put them in tool changer, I can simply add manual NC measure tool before the first time tool 121 is, is used and the relevant code gets added and the tool gets measured and the holes get drilled. So anyway, that concludes the things that have been added to this generation of the uh, post processor. I hope there's something in there for everybody. Um, do let me know if you use them. Let me know how you get on. Thanks very much for watching. I'll talk to you all again sometime soon, I hope. Bye for now.